Hello guys, welcome to this. Uh, this is going to be the first in a little series of game asset creation videos where basically I take really simple ideas for assets and props and things like that and take them right from the beginning through to being ready to put into a game engine such as Unreal. So in this video we're going to look at creating a simple headstone. A um, bit grim but it's not much more complex than a simple box. So we're going to take you through modeling it, unwrapping it, then we're going to take it into ZBrush and we are going to add a bit of detail to it and break it up and add a bit of craggliness to it. And finally, we'll take it into Substance Painter where we will texture it. And at that point, we'll have a game ready asset. So I'm going to split this into three videos. This first video, we are going to look at just the 3DS Max portion of it, the model and the unwrap. And then we'll do the ZBrush section in a separate video and the Substance Painter in the third video. Um, I'm going to give each in this series a little complexity value. Uh, this one, I'm going to give a complexity value of 1. Maybe, I, I don't know, depending on what I do, they could go up to maybe 3 stars or 5 stars. I don't know. But just so you know when you're looking at them, uh, what kind of level they're at. Um, if you're new to 3D, um, check out my other videos on the topic. But also, uh, tackle, tackle these projects sort of in, in ascending order. So, I'll... I'll Probably start doing one star ones first of all and then build it up as we go But if you're watching this and I've got a stack of videos up uh, just tackle them at your at your own leisure and Just try and pick the complexity that's right for you. So let's get thrown over into 3d studio max here. I Did do a little test run of this, but I'm going to simplify it down a wee bit So we're going to make a little headstone uh, we'll try and blast through this as quick as we can. I'm going to start with a box and let me see before I do anything else I want to set up my units. My units are in centimeters. If your units aren't also in centimeters we can go to customize unit setup and set them in here. The reason I have them in centimeters is because I'll be going into the Unreal Engine which also measures in centimeters. Plus in centimeters you can kind of judge the size of this and make it realistic. So let me drag out a little box here. I'm not too worried about the size just yet. And my length, width, height are all very small, 6, 4, 3 centimeters. So I'm going to increase these up. Uh, width, let me see which one of them. Width, there we are. Width, I'm going to make this about 12 centimeters. Maybe, no, maybe go um, 15. We'll go 15 centimeters. Width wise, I'm going to make this about 75. I'll zoom out a bit there. And height-wise, we'll maybe go about 90. So we've got our little basic tombstone shape there. It's just a little bit taller than it is wide. And it's about as thick as a 6 centimeter ruler. Try and think of these things when you're modeling in real-world terms. Because if you remember, if you're playing as a character in a game, uh, your game engine tries to measure everything in real-world scale when it comes to the physics and things like that. I'm also going to increase the length segments and the height segments. Let me just check out the right ones here. Uh, I want to see these segments. So I'm going to press F4 on my keyboard and that'll bring up my little grid here. So we get four length, four height. I will just do one width segment. Uh, the width segments are for here, but we're not really going to do anything with that. So that's all I really want to do. I'm going to now right click here and convert to editable poly. And you'll see our little modifier panel changes over here. I'm going to go into vertex mode. And I'm just going to try and pull out some of this and make it a little bit more headstone shaped. So I'm going to grab these middle sets of vertices here, get my move tool, move those up, and give it just a very slight little arc on top. And what I will maybe do as well is just take, take this row here. I'm just going to take my scale tool just widen it a little bit just to give it a little bit of a kind of cartoony kind of vibe it's not going to be super realistic looking we're going for a kind of stylized look here just ever so slightly bulge it out a wee bit we could even just pull it in a wee bit at the bottom actually that looks kind of cool yeah i might stick with that actually awesome okay so last little thing i want to do now I want to give just a tiny wee soft edge. I want to soften this hard edge around it. So I'm going to select my edge tool. And I'm going to double click here. So if I just click once, it selects one. 
If I double click, it will do everything in a line. I'm going to hold control and double click here. I'll slide that top edge. I'm going to hold control and double click here. Oh, the double click did not work that time. Try this one. There we go. So we've got this whole front edge. And all I want to do is go to my chamfer option here in my modify panel. And we're, going, we're not going to hit the chamfer itself. We're going to hit this little box beside it, this little tiny square button. And that'll bring us up some options for the actual chamfer. And if I zoom in close, you'll see what's happening here. It's splitting that edge and kind of softening it down in a little triangle, softening it down a little bit. So I want to make that a little bit bigger. At the minute it starts at 0.1 centimeter. I'm going to bring this up to about, I'm going to make that one centimeter. There we go. You can see what's happening there. It just gives a bit of a beveled edge. That is grand. Okay. And we'll hit okay. I'm going to go to the back. And I'm going to repeat that process. Double click. Hold control so we can select more edges. Double click. And this side, hold control so we can select more edges, double click, and that'll select all the way around. You'll notice I'm not doing the bottom, because the bottom will be sort of buried within the earth or whatever, we'll not really see the bottom. And go to my chamfer again, and one centimeter, and we'll save the value from last time, one centimeter, perfect, there we go. And there we have our little simple headstone shape, that's all I'm going to do with this. We could make this more complex. Uh, we could uh, put a smooth on this and make it a little smooth and round it out. Because I want to just keep this very, very simple for beginners, we're not going to make it much higher poly than this. Uh, let me see. Anything else we might want to do? Do we need to touch our smoothing groups? If I hit F4, we can see our smoothing groups here. Smoothing groups look okay. Smoothing groups look okay. We can maybe... Now nah, we'll leave these kind of nice and hard edged here. That's grand. And we can see we've got smoothing groups applying down the side here. So although from the front it's a little bit sharp corners, we can actually look at the angle on the smoothing groups and make it look nice and smooth. I like that. We're going to stick with that. Press F4 to turn those uh, lines back on. And okay, one last thing I want to do just on the very, very bottom of this. So when we're modeling our game assets, we like to make sure that all our polygons stay uh, four sided. So whether they're diamond shaped, square shaped, rectangular shaped, whatever, we do want to make sure they have four sides to them and four sides only. If I look at the bottom here, because I chamfered uh, along the sides here, this bottom polygon no longer has four sides. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, this is a really, really easy fix. I'm just going to try and uh, zoom in here. I can rotate around this one, get a bit of a better angle for you. What I want to do to connect these up, all I need to do to take this from a six sided poly is just uh, actually, let me just show you, it'll be as easy to show you. I'm going to select this little vertex here, hold control, and select this little vertex here. Then I'm going to just hit the connect button here. And what this will do is we'll create a new edge between those two vertices. Splitting that one polygon into two. And the good thing is, if we split a six sided poly down the middle, it gives us two four sided polys. So there we go, there's polygon one and polygon two, and each of those now has four sides. And it will just be a little bit nicer when it comes to the smoothing and the shading and the lighting and stuff within our game engine. And um, we need to do the same thing on this other side here. Exactly the same process, just going to my vertex mode. Click on this one, control click on this one, and press connect. There we go. Easy peasy. Okay, so that is our little model made. At this point, what we want to do is save our model. So I am just going to go file save. Remember your 10 minute save rule. This PC, I will just put it on my uh, hard drive here. So we're going to click in, call it headstone, and hit save. There we go. Remember, 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 save your models as you go. So many times, uh, so many of my students have lost work, or even myself, I've been in the middle of recording videos and the power cuts, and I've lost everything.
So there we go. Next thing we want to do is we want to unwrap this so that we can texture it. I am going to, in my modifier panel here, we have our modifier list. I'm just going to click this. And I'll take a second to catch up. My laptop is a little bit glitchy. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of this menu. And we have a modifier here called Unwrap UVW. So we click that and apply it to our mesh. And what you'll see happening here, uh, in fact, let me just change the color of this. It's adding green seams here for the UV Unwrap, but green on green isn't good. So I want to change the color of this object. I'm just coming up here to this little green square in the modifier panel. Just click on that. Oh, let's change a different color. I'll go this navy color here. There we go. Make sure lines easier to see. If I zoom in, hopefully it's coming through well in the video, but you should see we have our regular white seams for the polygons. And it's also giving us a load of green seams here on certain polygons. Now, what is this doing? When we unwrap our model, what we're basically doing is trying to flatten it out, take that 3D object, cut it into pieces, and lay them out flat on a square texture. And that square texture is uh, what we're going to use to kind of color it, color the surface. Our textures are basically the paint on the surface of the model. So our textures tend to be just square JPEGs or square PNG files, which obviously aren't 3D. They're just laid out flat. So if I just open this here, uh, this is our UV, uh, UV editor window. So we just scroll down on our modify panel here, open UV editor. And what we can see here is our square texture. This little checkered pattern represents our texture that we're going to apply to this model. Now all textures have to be a flat 2D image and it has to be a square. So what we have to do is basically take this 3D model. And as you see, I select polygons here. They are being represented on this uh, flattened plane. What I have to do is flatten these out so that they are all facing one way and they're all flattened out. Think of it as if you have a, a cereal box and you're, instead of being like a, a rectangular or cube shaped box, we're flattening it out just in flat cardboard. That's effectively what we have to do here. So there are a number of ways of doing this and the more complex your model is, the, the longer it'll take to get a good unwrap. Here is, I'm going to show you first of all the absolute most nuclear bomb simple way to do it, the, the scorched earth tactic. All I want to do is select this little icon here at the bottom. So same as in our modifier panel, we have vertex, edge, polygon, etc. Down here we can do the same. We can select by vertex, we can select by edge, we can select by poly, etc. Uh, currently let's try to squeeze everything in on this and it's put a lot of it on top of each other. What I'm going to do, I'm going to select polygon mode. I'm going to just select everything and you'll be able to see here as well that it selects every polygon. And then we're just going to go to Mapping, Flatten Mapping. You get this little box here, and we can control this a little bit, but we just hit OK. What this has effectively done is it has taken those green seams that were on this model, and those are basically the, the cut lines. So think of our cereal box, and we're taking a pair of scissors to it, where we're going to cut it. Uh, these green lines represent the cut lines, and you can see here, if I just make this a little bit bigger, it has flattened those out, and it's flattened them out quite nicely. It's not too bad. I don't really like the fact that these edges are all crooked and not really fitting in too well, but I might just leave it like this. In later videos, we will talk a bit more about the UV unwrap, but I might just leave this one as it is just so we can blast through a bit quicker. So a uh, key thing with our UV unwrap, we want to make this take up as much space as possible. We want to use as much of this as we can because then we'll get more detailed textures. Now, I don't think we're too bad here. We can't really make these front and back faces much wider without, uh, without going outside the bounds of our square. So I might just leave this as it is. Um, well, no, I'll show, you, I'll show you very quickly just how we can manipulate this a wee bit. So, I'm going to click this little icon here, which says select by element. So just as it is, if I select one polygon now, I will only select one polygon. But if I activate this little toggle here as well, when I click on one of these, it'll select the whole island and I can move the whole thing. So what I want to do is I'm going to leave these ones 
I'm going to leave these where they are. I'm going to leave this more or less where it is. I'm just going to take this guy and move him out to the side. Take this guy, move him out to the side. Take you. Take you as well. Oops. And take you. And in fact, if I hold control, I can select multiple and just move them all out. So that's all of those wee scraggly edge bits moved there. What all I really want to do here, I just want to try and maximize how much space I'm giving to these headstones. So I'm going to select this one and I'm just going to nudge it over as close to this one without touching. You want to leave a wee bit of padding between them, just a wee tiny bit. If it's too close, like less than a pixel or two, um, you will see some artifacts and it will kind of mess up just a wee bit. You get some weird shading glitches and things. So we do want to leave a little bit of padding between these. We also, we never really want to have stuff overlapping. If I was to overlap this and I was to put some text on my gravestone, say just RIP, something like that, what would happen is it would appear both on the front and the back because both of these are, are going to be referencing the same part of our texture. So if we want to have two different things on, uh, on each side, we want to keep these separate. Now, that's not to say you can't overlap things. Um, oftentimes we do to save texture space, but in most cases, you want to make sure that nothing is overlapping. And especially you want to make sure that it's not just overlapping by like a small amount like that, because again, that will cause us uh, glitches that we can't fix without coming way back to this part of the process. And that can be a real pain in the bum. So best to avoid it. And just keep a little bit of padding between these. So with those like that, I'm going to select this one now. And I'm just going to scale it up ever so slightly. Now, we don't want to scale up like this or like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the control key and that will keep them in proportion. And you'll see that as I make it wider, it goes uh, taller at the same amount. And I just want to bring this up just ever so slightly. So it didn't make much of a difference here, but it gives just a wee tiny bit more detail on our UV map. So what else do I want to do? Uh, I've got this narrow little band of space in here. Uh, so what I want to do, I'm going to take these two, and I want to flip them around so they'll fit in here. There is a very handy wee way of doing this. If we look up here in the quick transform panel on the right, we've got little rotate 90 degrees, rotate 90 degrees buttons. Either one will do grand, and it just quickly swaps them around. We're going to do the same thing to this guy here. Just quickly rotate them around, and we'll just bring him down. In line with this guy, bring this one down in line with this guy as well. And that just means we have to sort out these two. Now these have a bit more crookedness to them. What should we do with this? Um, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to deactivate this little whole element mode. I don't want to select this whole element now. I actually just want to take these two polygons here that are kind of at the other angle. So I'm just going to deactivate element toggle. And I'm going to select this polygon and this polygon. And what I want to do is I want to break these off. I want to add another little scissor cut line here and break this. And it's really easy to do that. We have this option here called Explode. And the break. And it looks literally just like a bit of paper being torn apart. We just click that. What this will do is it will add another little green seam in there. And we can just now remove that. So what I want to do is I want to rotate this. I can just take my rotate tool here and make this one horizontal. And rotate this one. Actually, sorry. Now I want to do select this whole uh, element here and rotate it. And make it as horizontal as I can. It's not going to be perfect, but as good as we can. We'll go back to uh, this side, the, the basic mode here, freeform mode, we can't actually do everything rotate scale uh, from this. So let me see. I'm trying to pack these in as tight as I can. Maybe that should have element mode if I did. Uh, bring it in there. Let's see, do, can we fit all these guys in now? And just bring them back into the texture. That's just a little bit too big, I think. So I will just uh, I'll reactivate element mode for handiness and just pull you down a wee bit just so you're not touching. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so basically just repeat that process um, without the element mode selected. I'm going to select this guy and this guy. 
hit that little uh, break button in the explode panel just to separate these two pieces. Click, done. New view. Um, we can actually rotate here. You'll see that we have these uh, little icons here. Um, eight little squares. If we take any of these ones kind of at the bottom in the middle, or any of the middle ones, we can rotate. If we hover over at the center of it, we can move. And if we go to the corners, we can scale. Now, we don't want to scale this, so just control C and I'll do that. But yeah, we can rotate all from the one window. Just pull you on it a bit of blank space. Take, oh, take this whole bow here. Rotate them as flat as we can get them. And fit them in. There we go. So, I didn't really need to do that. It hasn't given me too much more uh, efficiency than what I already had to begin with. But just to show you the process of how we can manipulate this a wee bit. Subsequent videos, we're going to add to the complexity of this. Um, and I'll show you a bit more control on how you unwrap. But for now, this will do. Now, we don't need to do anything from here. Uh, I can just close that. And at this point, our model is effectively good to go. I'm just going to right click here and uh, swap this at the minute as a polygon mode just by the top level mode. Uh, I'm happy enough with that. The only thing I'm going to do, just because it can be good practice later on when you're developing more complex models, I'm going to go over to the hierarchy tab here and I'm going to scroll down to where it says reset, transform, and scale. I'm just going to click both of those. Now you're not going to see anything happen there, and for this model, nothing should happen. But as I've said in some other videos, when you model and when you sculpt and we start to stretch and squash and extrude and do things to your models, um, the mathematics that's going on under the hood, they don't always translate perfectly to other pieces of software. So particularly, I've said before, if you use the mirror tool here, uh, say you want to use like a, a plane with two engines on it and you mirror from one side to the other, um, although it looks right in 3ds Max, it won't translate right to the other software unless you click a couple of these wee buttons here, reset, transform, reset, scale. What it effectively does is make sure that yes, what you see in Max is what you will get in other software. So it's it's good habit to get into, uh, just hit reset, transform, reset, scale. Now what we want to do is we want to export this so that we can open it in our other software. So all I'm going to do, uh, and another little piece of good practice that we can do as well. I want to move this to my origin point. So do I have my grid here? Can I see my grid? Uh, you don't need to do this wee bit. I'm just going to show my grid just so you can see it here. Uh, grids and snaps, grid and snap settings. Home grid, grid spacing every, I'm going to say this every 10 centimeters and give this 15. Go and hit G, show my grid. Okay, so here is my grid. Uh, one last wee thing I want you to do before you start exporting, always get into the habit. Your model, the new model, could be way out here somewhere. Now look that we have this little black line running through our grid. This represents the, the zero point in our world space. This is the origin point, the zero, zero, zero coordinates. Uh, it's always good to make sure that your models are on that point when you export them because then when you bring it into your other engines, Unreal, etc., uh, it just it means you can avoid any glitches where the pivot point is going to be way out here and your model's over here and you try to rotate it and scale it, it can go a bit weird. So all we want to do is um, we could manually try and eyeball it and that'll probably be good enough. But if you want to be precise, if you look at these wee numbers down the bottom here and you'll see it shows you the actual location point uh, for this model. So the location point is taken off our wee gizmo here. Uh, this would be the anchor point. And it's at 53 and minus 84. All we have to do is on our little up and down arrows here where we can adjust this. If I just right click that and then right click the other one, it instantly resets them to zero. So that's a nice little tip you can have there for moving stuff by your origin point. Okay, that's grand. We're happy to go. Uh, one last wee thing before I export. Um, it's called box 001. Uh, up here in your modify and your hierarchy tab, we see the name of the object. Just for handiness, uh, the name of the object, when we take this into Unreal and we're trying to manage our scenes, rather than just seeing a load of objects, we're called Box 01, Box 02, etc. It's good to give this a name. So we will call this one just um, low poly underscore headstone. There we go. Grand. 
Good job. Uh, click off that. Now, we're ready to export. All I'm going to do is select this object. And if we add multiple objects, we just select them all. We select random and select all the ones we want. Go to File, Export, Export Selected. Now, the file type that I like to use in Unreal is the Autodesk FBX file. This is what I like to use. So let me see. I'm just going to navigate. Uh, same place I put that last one before. And we'll call this low poly underscore headstone. Um, and just to show that it's different from what we call the object itself, I just call it low poly headstone uh, mesh. Let's do that and save. There's lots of stuff in here, but we don't really need to touch this. We just hit OK. And that will save us out a little FBX file. Now, most of the times that's fine, that's all you have to do. But what I want to do in the next video is take this into ZBrush and do a bit of sculpting on it. So ZBrush does not like the FBX file type. So what I'm going to do as well is just go back to Export Selected and just change this to an OBJ. So we two thirds of the way down, we have OBJ Exporter, a .obj file. It's basically, it's very similar to an FBX, but just a little bit simpler. It doesn't contain just as much data. So I'm just going to uh, call this one uh, low poly headstone mesh underscore OBJ. We'll, we'll be able to see the extension anyway, but if we call this an OBJ, we'll be able to distinguish between the two. Another wee box here. Um, we don't really need to touch anything on this at the minute. I'll just hit export. And there we go, it's exporting. Brilliant. And we just hit done. This will show you the number of polys and verts you have there total. So you can see we're very low poly. Um, just hit done. There we go. Everything's grand. That is as far as I want to go in 3D Studio Max. As far as I'm concerned, that's my job done in 3D Studio Max. So I'm going to leave this video here. And then in the next video, we will open up in ZBrush and start working from there. Okay, thank you for watching. I will see you very shortly.